Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Frank Iñigas. I am the ambassador of reading. And today we have an awesome, awesome guest, Alex Alfaro. He's co-author of three wonderful books. He's going to talk just a little bit about the books, and then he's going to talk about his story. He has something wonderful, wonderful to share that's physical and mental. You want to hear it, so stick around. Alex, how are you doing? Great, Frank. How are you doing? I'm excited, man. We have you here thank, in our thank channel. Thank you for having me. Appreciate yeah. it. I'm super excited for the team because they're looking for wonderful people like you and they found you. And I'm glad you said yes. So it's uh, first, first time doing this, so I'm excited about yeah. it myself. And, you know, <laughs> looking forward to it. So let's. Well, you know what? I'm glad that it's your first time and it's on our channel because we like to bring good information to our community. And I think you're just a wonderful human being where they can, you guys are going to learn a lot from him. Before we started filming, we started talking and my jaw dropped. This guy's amazing, both physical and mental. So what do you want to get started with first, physical or mental? Well, let's, whatever you want, it's up to you. This is your channel. All but, right. But I mean, it, they both go hand in hand to me, so it's. Yeah, and you know what? I agree with Alex, they go hand in hand. If you're not taking care of your body, like I always say, um, your mind may be all there, but if you can't go from point A to point B, all right, I mean, if you're lacking energy, you're not going to go anywhere. Right. And we're going to talk about his body. He keeps an amazing body. <laughs> How old are you? I'm going to be 46 in November. 40, so he's 45. So he's 45. Yeah. And uh, the way he has maintained his body is amazing. I like to keep my body, as you know, but not as excellent as his. And we're going to talk about that. If you invest in your mind, if you invest in your body, Things are going to work out for you. There's no laws there ever, ever. So let's go with the body. How old were you when you started working out? Oh, when I started working out, <sighs> it was right after high school and a little bit in college. I'd say I was like 21 years old when I first started. Um, I haven't looked back since. Oh. I mean, I've had my moments. You know, we've, I've had, I had my COVID moment, my COVID weight. Um, but once I hit that, that was it. So you waited a little bit during that time. How long did you wait? Uh, well, I got my highest was 210 pounds during COVID. Two? This body was 210 yeah. pounds? And now it's at 180. So I was 210, 18 to 19% body fat. I'm at 180 under 10% body fat right now. <laughs> oh, 200. I can't believe you were 210 uh, yeah. pounds. Yeah, neither can I. Wow. And you're 180 now. Yeah. 80, 90, 100. That's 30 pounds less. Wow. Yeah, in a good, in, I would say in a good six months. So what, what did you do? Fat. You just rested, did nothing? Yeah, I mean, I did what everybody else did. Ate, drank. Well, not everybody, not me. Watch TV. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Only some people. <laughs> no, no, I just, you know, we couldn't go to the gym, so that's a, that's a hindrance, right? And they didn't want people outside for a certain time, too, so you, the tracks were closed. And anything that you would be able to do to get exercise, they made it hard to do. So, I mean, I, my mindset, it kind of took, took a little turn and I just, once I got it back, I got it back. And like I told you earlier, once, once I made that decision from this point on that that's it, I'm going to be in this shape for the rest of my life, I'm not looking back. We'll invite him uh, five years from now to keep an eye on this guy. No problem. But I think, I no think he's going to keep up with it. <laughs> yeah. The goal is to keep looking better and better, so we'll see how that that's goes. That's awesome. There's, uh, I do my walks, as all of you know that follow me on Facebook or Instagram. I'm walking 500 miles and during my, my uh, miles that I'm walking, I put my mind to think and it's just me with me and there's a word that has come across my mind called transformation and I can hear it and see it in his body that he has been working with the word transformation and you mm -hmm. out there, you're always transforming also. If you're not in awareness, you transform into a 210 pound man, maybe not so happy. And when you're in awareness, you can still transform into 210. However, it's with awareness. And this guy did it in awareness to go down to 180 pounds. So talk to us about it. Well, um, yeah, once, once I made a decision, obviously everything starts with a decision. With a choice. Yeah, yeah everything starts with a decision. And, and you know, that decision comes with y your reason for that decision, right? Um, and as, as I continued to grow mentally, um, 
I, I put I started to put two and two together. I, I felt the greatest mentally when I felt the greatest physically. And it wasn't I didn't need to be at this point. I just needed to start to take the action to get me to that point when I might my mind already started to change. So um, once I realized that I, I just I started and I got to it and, and haven't looked back since. Wow. Yeah. You you do any jogging or just the gym? I do I do running, which is something that I never did before that. Uh -huh. So now I'm up to about fifteen, close to twenty miles a week. Oh wow. Yeah. That's really good. You should have seen me the first time I went running. I couldn't <laughs> even move. I couldn't even walk the later that day. I mean it it was it was a mess, but that's when I was two ten. But I just never stopped. I just kept moving. You know what? I, I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm imagining you running because I, I did a lot of running when I was younger. Yeah. And I love uh, I love jogging. I used to think when I was a little kid that I could jog around the world without it, without stopping. I really did think I could do that. Yeah. I could. I, I thought I could just go forever. I I, I could stop whenever I want to stop. So um, we're gonna. I th you know what? I'm gonna ask him to take off his shirt now, right now. So, <laughs> so stick, stick for the stick for the rest of the for the for the rest of the interview. Oh man, this guy has an amazing body. I mean, uh, he says here, let me show you what I've done, and I'm like, whoa! The, he's uh, but it takes it takes determination. You don't just make a choice and say, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym and look like that. No, it, it takes determination. When you don't want to get up, because I'm sure you had moments like that. Oh, I gotta go to the gym at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. As as you progress and you're starting to see the the change in your body, I'm sure you get excited. It's like, oh yeah, a little bit more, a little bit more. But at the beginning, when you don't see anything happening, how did that feel? Um. Well, I mean, it, it it's different for me because um, just taking the action changes my whole mental state. Uh, but I understand how you know people want results and want to see results and, and, and um, usually stop because they don't see results um, but it's it's it, you have to forget about the outcome focus know what you want um, and just focus on the actions because eventually you know you're gonna get there and everybody, like I was telling you earlier, everybody knows what they have to do to, um, to get in shape and to, to be healthy and to eat right. Um, but it's the action and the determination and, and that's where it starts to get a little bit tricky. It gets, it gets difficult for most, but um, it's a lot of subconscious work that needs to be done and, and you know, there's a lot of mental work that needs to be done to stay focused and stay determined. Um, but it's not difficult. I'm, I, I tell people all the time, it's not, it's not difficult to get yeah. in shape. It's, it's actually pretty simple. The, the actions are simple. It's just doing it is, is, the, is yeah. the hard part for some people. I, you, I just you know, when I, I was younger, I got to work for a company, a gym yeah. called Jack LaLanne. So I used to do Jack LaLanne. Jack LaLanne. You yeah. remember that? Yeah. And uh, I used to teach... Uh, I used to teach aerobics and then I used to teach the weight training. Yeah. And you know, when we're in powerful physical shape, when we're looking good, it's easy to say those words that it's easy. But I know I've been through it. I, I have pictures where I love the way my body looked. Mm -hmm. And right now I, I really, I had to come to terms as I get older, what weight am I gonna stay for the rest of my life? I've chosen 185 pounds for, for the rest of my life. Sometimes I go 180, nine one night even and i and i know that i have to make adjustments that's your adjustment well, yeah, so absolutely. you know if, if i'm 180 i'm feeling excited but i know that my weight my my goal my target is 185 yeah and for you i know that you have already come to terms where this is the way you want to look for the rest of your life that's pretty awesome yeah is it the physical or the weight for you the, uh, it's, the, it's both i mean the weight at this point the weight is kind of irrelevant for me um it's, it's funny because the beginning of the year I had my goal set and, and I have my physical and, and, and health goals set and I've, it's always been 180, 10% body fat. So I was able to, to get there. Now it's more of the body fat 
So I'm, I'm <coughs> the weight. The weight I fluctuate now 180, 185, maybe 177. But I'm I'm just if I stay within that range, oh, cool. I'm, I'm good. Okay, it's, so it's you've not, already came to terms too. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. 180, 185, no more than 185. Yeah. Oh, cool. Absolutely. I, I want no more than 190. But my target goal from now until I die is 185. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about the mind a lot. And that's why we have him here. If it was just a physical, I guess I'd be in, he'd be in the wrong channel. Because yeah. <laughs> this is, I mean, I do always tell you to stay physically fit. <clears throat> and I tell you to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, floss, and all that good stuff. But it's he, he's got a, a powerful mind just the way he's got his body he's got his mind and you know it's interesting people can judge the body and say oh he's doing really good but people cannot see your brain people don't know what you put in your brain and that's that's the power of it and i love our channel uh, um um the, the the content that he brings because it has to do mostly with the mind however i do talk about your physical stay physically fit yeah. He was he is co-author of these three wonderful books, Positive Mental Attitude, Refusing to Quit, and Journey to Success. Um, he has read more books on Napoleon Hill that I've I mean, I don't know that many people that have read so many Napoleon books. And before we got started on the interview, we were chatting, we were talking, and he started mentioning titles. Tell us about Napoleon Hill. How did you come across Napoleon Hill? Okay, well, it, it, what's, it's funny. Um, well, my first job, my first sales job, uh, the owner of the company gave me the book, Think and Grow Rich. He says, hey, here, read this. Of course, at the age of 21, 22, you, you think you know everything, so you don't need to read books or do any of that stuff because you, you got it all. You know, I, I was making money at that age. I, I, I was doing good. But I had the book, and it sat there for 10 years. Whoa. Ten years. Ten years. Okay, cut the I camera, send them on. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's in this book here, this first one. And, Refusing and to quit? Yeah. So um, I got into real estate in, in, you know, in 2008, the market crashed, and I was doing very well, and, and the market crashed. And, and for some reason, that book during that time was the, some of the toughest times you know, in my life, and I'm sure a lot of people's lives at that, during that crash. Um, I picked that book up. It was there. I started reading it. From that point on, it, it completely changed my life. I mean, I, I searched for the foundation and I found the Napoleon Hill Foundation. I became a certified instructor for the Napoleon Hill Foundation um, and their laws of success. I co-authored these books with other Napoleon Hill Foundation uh, members. Um, so he's been uh, the staple. Since then, I've read a lot of other books. Um, all kinds of different different genres and and but it's all been self-development and daily growth and since since then um, you know it's it's funny because when I was before Napoleon Hill I was in real estate so in real estate there's a lot of self-development going on there's a lot of seminars and you know I, I don't even remember the names of the guys but um, I always look back at that because they were all talking about Napoleon Hill who's I mean <laughs> in my opinion, the guru of self-development. Yeah, I think, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, go ahead. No, because, I mean, we talked about it before we yeah. Yeah, started the interview, and we come into an agreement that we, we love Napoleon Hill books. We love his philosophy, the way he wrote his books, the way he exposed it to the world. And we, we agree that not enough justice has been given to Napoleon Hill. I think this name has to be put out and hopefully through this video you go and research Napoleon Hill yourself and it's a, he's one of the most wonderful authors. He's one of my favorites. I don't yeah. know about you. No, he's, yeah, of course, top <coughs> top five with Think and Grow Rich being number one for sure. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. Think and Grow Rich, I mentioned that book before, Think and Grow Rich. If you haven't read it, you're taking from yourself. Um, also, um, to get to this body, you also need the mind. Absolutely. And you have a good state of mind. How do you get your state of mind? Positive mental attitude, obviously, is, is the goal. And it's, it's tough in this environment that, in, you know, in, in the world that we live in, where we're surrounded by the negativity, the negative news, the negative, you know, negative people, negative everything. It's almost like we start in a ditch 
in the morning when we wake up, we're, we're bombarded with the negativity. We have to work our way out to become positive, right? Self-development, no matter what it is, exercise, reading, um, that's how I, I maintain a, a positive mental attitude. I have to be doing something of growth. Um, e even, you know, showing love to my wife is, is growth in our, my relationship. So even if I do that, do something for her, that's daily growth in my oh, relationship, awesome. right? But it's always reading, starts with reading. I've always, I always have an audio book in my ear. Um, whenever I'm in the car, I'm, I'm listening to an audio book. <coughs> Um, yeah, books and different books. I'm not just reading one. I'm, I have like four. I, that's a, that's the ADD kicking in, right? Because I got five <laughs> books. I got five books that I'm reading at the same time, but I, I get through them. Um, but yeah, you develop habits that you consistently do that puts you in the right state of mind. Um, another habit of mine is is and and part of my mastermind group is is um, no snooze. You know, we, 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 you can't snooze. You, know, you mean in the morning when the alarm sounds? When the alarm no sounds, snooze. you can't snooze because you're already, you're already failing on the very first task that you set out for the day. <laughs> how, how are you supposed to have a positive mindset when I, you failed before you even got up, right? So those, those little things, you know, you, you, um, I have a set of habits that I do consistently uh, to keep my mind in a certain uh, mind frame. But continuous growth is... is happiness for me i mean that's 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 my secret to happiness is growth but and then po that which leads to the positive mental attitude which leads to the success in all avenues of life and physical fitness and all that good stuff you know right now when you were saying no snooze i talked to this one guy and i i don't know how the conversation came about no snoozing and um uh, they, uh, so I asked him to use news and he goes, yeah, I said, you're failing, man. You're, you're already starting out wrong. He goes, no, you're wrong. I'm succeeding. The, <laughs> the finger goes all the way to the news button <laughs> and, it, and it works. I go, yeah, you're succeeding on the small things. And I think a lot of people think because they, they, they become task oriented, succeeding on the little things, I think deviates them to go to the big things. And I think... A lot of people are snoozing in life, doing the little things rather than the big things they want to do. I got to hand it to him. He took a, a negative and put a positive on it. So <laughs> that's, I mean, that's a positive mental attitude right there. But that's not the point. I mean, that, yeah, <laughs> no, no. The point, the point is, is if you're going to say, and it's not hard. I mean, when we do it in the mastermind group, we're telling the guys, look, you set the alarm. I mean, if you know you're not going to get up at 4 a.m. like everybody wants to be or 5 a.m., the spirit hours of the morning where, you know, the, the powerful people get things done. If you're not going to get up at that time, don't set it for that time. You know? Set it up to your time set to get up. up. Exactly. Set uh, it up. 8 o'clock. You want to sleep till 8? Go ahead. Set oh, the alarm at 8. You said something so powerful. You set it up. That's like uh, keeping your word. What did you say you were going to do? You say you were going to get up at 5 and then you have an alarm and you snooze. You're, you're not keeping up with your word. Exactly. I mean, and that's all Napoleon it is. And Napoleon Hill talks about the mm -hmm. uh, keeping up with your word, too. Yeah. He's, he's very, he's very, uh, he makes sure to uh, to highlight yeah. that he, he highlighted uh, keeping the word to yourself and to others. Yeah. Have you ever read The Four Agreements? I read it, yeah. Okay. The very first one is be impeccable with your word. And that's where that that's where that fits in. And right you know, there. a lot of people have asked me because I teach a seminar called SEPA. They've asked me, "Are you impeccable with your word?" I I tell them, "No, I don't think there's anyone that's impeccable a hundred percent all the time. Right. However, you want to be with your word as impeccable as you can. Of course. Yeah, because I mean, no nobody's one, perfect. Yeah, no one's perfect. Yeah, and nobody's perfect. They 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 have asked me before. So, are do you keep up with your word a hundred percent? I go, no. Many times, life throws a curveball and we must make adjustments however don't just walk away from your responsibility if you promise your kid that you were going to take him to the park at four and now they are, they're holding you in the office until 4 30 don't just don't don't just don't go right or don't call and say oh he's my kid he'll understand he's waiting at four give him a call yeah. hey son you know what i'm gonna have to finish something at work are you okay that we go at five and then keep your word at five
Yep. People are going to say you messed up on your word. No, you just made an adjustment. You made adjustments to your word. And I think right. that's that's really cool. And I, no, I'm not impeccable with my word, but for the most part, I like to keep it. I like to keep it as impeccable as possible. So that way Absolutely. people can count on us. You know, my, my daughter, you know, there, there are so many stories with my daughter on this YouTube channel. And one time there was a uh, conversation, not an argument between her and her mother. And she turns around and said, well, my father said, and if he says, it's probably going to get down, done, mom. So isn't that so cool to have that kind of credit? Yep, absolutely. If your kids <clears throat> are saying that, then you're it feels doing good, something huh? right. Absolutely. Yeah. Alex, uh, not only do you have a nice physical body and a powerful <laughs> brain. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it makes me laugh. He doesn't me. want to take credit. We're <laughs> well, going to ask him to take I, off his shirt later I, on. I, I appreciate the compliments. I really do. Stick, it, it, it stick just, around. It just kind of makes me laugh. If he doesn't do it, all of us are going to jump him and take off his shirt anyway. <laughs> anyway, Alex, uh, also, you, you're a successful man. Uh, you started mm -hmm. at 21. And you see, guys, he was handed a treasure at treasure. the age of Absolutely. 21. And we, we all know, well, we, the people that know about Napoleon Hill, we understand that that's a treasure. His boss gave it to him. He said, here's a, here's a box full of gold. Have it. What does he do? Put it away for 10 years. Uh, I've mentioned that book more than once in our channel. Go get it. Don't wait 10 years. Uh, we don't want to hear your story. Come back and sit at the chair and say, oh, yeah, I remember when Frank and Alex mentioned that it took me like 10 years we're, we're, we'll stop your video and we'll, and we'll record you go get it guys it's a treasure he waited 10 years yeah uh, I, to to read it don't wait yeah I, I do believe that that book is you're meant to read it when you read it um if i would have read it back then it probably would have went in one ear out the other and not understanding because i think that's a type of book where you can read it multiple times and get something completely different every single time you read it um so at the at 21 me probably wouldn't have gave it enough value so there's a reason why uh and and 21 me would have read it and tossed it probably and not kept it but since i didn't read it i still had it and um i think i had it at the right time i i, I had it at the time that i needed to have it so I, I, I see I see some value in that. I mean I I don't not I, I you know I wish I would have been mentally ready to understand it at 21, but I wasn't. Um, but I'm glad I, I picked it up and read it, and and it's put me on the path that I've been on since ever since. And you were 21, and uh, you you had a great boss. I think any boss that hands their employees a great book, they they see a value. I think they're great bosses. Yeah, I so. mean, I, 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 for my company, I, any new new account that I have has my wrap uh, with the book. Oh wow! I, I give that to pretty much anybody that I meet, oh, that, you is know, awesome. that I sell to, or, or that becomes my client gets that copy of that book. Yeah, now that you said that, uh, client or meet or company, he owns his own company. How old were you when you started your company? I was it was older already. It was 2013 when I started my own company, but I was always an independent wow. sales rep since that age of 21. Oh, you were a yeah. sales representative. Yeah. And then um, your company, how old were you when you started it? I don't, know, I don't know how old I was. What was that? 2013, uh, 30s in the 30s somewhere. So 30. See, 21. Mm -hmm. Ten years later. Uh, ten years later, he's 31. Uh, I don't know, yeah. a coincidence or what? I mean, he reads <laughs> exactly. the book, he starts the company. Just think about it. Right, exactly. And, you know, exactly. it. we kind of, um, him and I merge in the sense that I took a class 33 years ago designed uh, by uh, Napoleon Hill. Uh, PSI, I've mentioned it many times. So if you want to go check it out in Spanish, it's SEPA. We teach it, a few of us teach it. So um, we merge in the sense that he read Napoleon Hill at the age of 30 and I took the class and it does make a big difference you invest in your brain uh, investing in the mind people that don't invest in the mind uh, it's already known in the uh, California lottery I don't know there's world lotteries uh, they get that 10 million 100 million million whatever it is yeah. and you know it doesn't take long before there's no money in their hands but if you invest in here uh, even with little or nothing, you can create an empire. Yeah. Um, so, w what is your company about? 
Uh, it's called SEL Global. It's a consulting firm for logistics. So mm -hmm. um, we do everything from trucking to ocean freight to air freight to um, to rail. Wow. So uh, anything moving products from point A to point B. And you've been doing that for how long? <sighs> right out of college. So since. 1999, so 21, 22 years. Wow, oh, that's that's in pretty the awesome. industry. Yeah. So, uh, and you see, he doesn't slow down and putting books in his brain constantly. He doesn't uh, slow down in yeah. taking care of his physical body. And you you look at the people that, you know, like Kim. I don't know if I I don't know if you've ever been in a party where you see people taking care of themselves oh no that's too much food and you look at their bodies and it's like you're worried about too much food and then you look at the people that have too much food and it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be the other way or, or like you go to the gym you don't need to go to the gym of course he doesn't yeah. need to go to the gym but if he wants to keep himself physically fit he needs to go to the gym that's just it you know it comes to mind right now Alex uh, there's this young man he took my class he took PSI and then took my class Mm -hmm. my mastermind class he was 19 years old yeah and he has a podcast called charro azteca check him out he's amazing um <clears throat> what i'm starting to find that successful people do men or women uh they constantly read he wakes up to books audiobooks and he's constantly reading yeah and then there's this other young young man i mean he's amazing he's got to hear something positive every day no excuses and I see his results and it's amazing. And then you, uh, you invest quite a bit of time in your mind and yeah. in your body. Yeah. What do you want to, anything you want to share about that? Um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's always been for me, uh, not to make it sound selfish or anything, but everything I do is, is just for my own mental growth and um, so I can get better and, and be better um, so I, I did the Napoleon Hill Foundation and, and I went through the course and you know just so I can uh, just growth right and then I, I studied NLP and, and became a master practitioner uh, which is the science of communication which is hypnosis and the science of communication but it wasn't to communicate with others it was to communicate with myself right I wanted to learn how <coughs> to talk to myself and, and, and you know how to program the subconscious um, you know, conti continuously to be positive. And that's, that's, you have to actually take action to be, to have a positive mental attitude or else you're going to just fall into the, into the, the standard, which is unfortunately negative. Reading for me is the easiest way to, to start the day with a positive mental attitude. Obviously, you've got to be reading positive books. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, that, I mean, that's obvious, right? I, I would hope it's obvious. If you're, not, if you're reading doom and gloom you know, books, then of course your mind is going to go there. If you're watching negative TV or watching TV shows and that's, that's bringing your energy down, I mean, you, you have to find the things that, that boost your energy. For me, it's, it's reading. That, that's, you asked me earlier uh, off camera what I like to do, and I said reading sounded so cliche and, and you know I'm like oh yeah whatever right but I mean that's what I like to do yeah I, me I mean too. I like to do it and, and I, like <coughs> to, I like to exercise and all that stuff and, and do you know just because it keeps my mind in the right place um, there's so much you can learn I mean you, you you the whole concept of mastermind is is to surround yourself with people that um, that are like-minded and and are going where you're going or, or, or or are there already so you can learn from them well w what better way than to pick up somebody's autobiography or think you know people's lessons in, in, in how to do things and model that same concept it's really not we don't have to reinvent the wheel right yeah. we, <laughs> all we have to do is <coughs> do what they tell you to do and, and, and then when it comes to fitness it's really not that difficult yeah. let's get you know just do something he's already said it like uh, <laughs> 10 times he said normal guys <laughs> <laughs> it's not if physical. it was really easy we would all have the body yeah. alex I, but i, I think it, it takes did. it takes someone with a, a state of mind like yours to create that because if it was really easy believe me we would all be walking with that body that you have well but it's easy it's just easier to not do it ah there's a saying that I, 
There's a thing that I have easy to do, easy not to do. Go. So I'm committed to doing push-ups every day for the rest of my life. So for me, I mean, I wanted to go to the gym, but then I, I, I find it easier not to go than to go. There you go. So and it's still yeah. easy. So, that <laughs> so yeah, because a lot of people, uh, when they have the success, like you, you're a pretty su very successful man. Thank you. It's easy to say it's easy. However, uh, I I know that before I got to where I'm at, I had my struggles. Right. And I can't sit here in front of the camera and say, "Come on, guys, it's easy." Right. right. There's gonna I get be, that. There's going to be challenges. And maybe at the beginning of the video, they're going to go, well, if it was so easy, why did he hit 210? Well, you know, because there's choice, power of choice. And what does Napoleon Hill talk about? Power of choice. You choose. Of course. So you yeah. choose. And in my class, in my mastermind class, I teach uh, self-discipline. And it's funny. What do you mean self-discipline? Then they can teach it themselves. Well, I, we, I provide exercise activities where they're going to gauge themselves to being able to do it or not do it. And one of the activities is flossing. Mm -hmm. Another one is push-ups. Can you believe it? Push-ups. And they think it's easy. And I go, well, here comes the two words. And you may want to jot this down. Two things that hold a human being are uh, laziness and indifference. And yeah, we can all have that body. And you have to gauge it. I mean, there's people that do have two jobs, Alex. I mean, there's people that do have to put out 10 hours or 12 hours to make ends meet. So for them, I don't want to tell them, hey, it's easy. No, it's not easy. But if you want to work it out and if it means something to you, if if, the, if there's a reason for them to do it, yeah, purpose. then they're going to make it happen. But if there's no reason, then they're not going to make it happen. Yeah. So anything you want to share? I mean, it, it, this past year and a half, these past two years with, with COVID, should have given everybody reason enough to to want to be healthy to want to be in shape um, to want to be around for the, their family as long as they possibly can because um, without that i mean that should be purpose enough um, but again indifference indifference takes over and laziness laziness takes over and um, like we were saying it's easy to it's easy to do these other things as well but you got to always have a purpose in, in everything that you decide to do and, and that purpose has to be strong enough um, to to get you to take action right so um, and again I say it's easy because it, it re they're really simple tasks that you that you should do I mean number one is get a scale right because you can't know where you want to go if you don't know where you're at. Right? That's, that's beautiful. I mean, that's number, excellent. N number one, the, the very first thing is get yourself a scale. I mean, that's the start. Yeah. Jump on it. Jump on it daily until you see what you, until you realize, okay, and I don't like this. And don't get off. I mean, what, guys, <clears throat> something so beautiful, if you don't know where you're at, then you don't know where you're going. Right. I <clears throat> I remember when I hit 204, I said, I, never again will I be 204. Never again. And when I started dropping my weight, I said, okay, I feel good at 185. I eat pretty much anything I want. I still get to do my walk or my jog. I, I was going to the gym at one time. I'm not going to the gym at the moment, but I do do my push-ups daily. Yeah. So, yeah, it, if, if you set it where there's a task to be completed and you know it's completed... I think in a way that makes it easier, no? Absolutely. Like Absolutely. if you say you're going to do 20 push-ups, well, do your 20 push-ups. Yeah, and it's not hard <coughs> to do, right? 20 <coughs> push-ups is, is easy to do. It's easy not to hard do. to do. Yeah. The tasks are not hard to do. You just have to do them. Um, and then I, I would start with the scale. And then um, I always lead with water. Yeah, always water. Always water. Water is everything. Water is the key to, to health, hands down. Um, and you, you should be drinking at least 36 ounces for every 50 pounds of body weight. So that sounds like a lot. <laughs> but it, it's the key to, to good health. And it, you, you will lose weight by just doing that. You don't need to go to the gym. You don't need to exercise. If you just drink enough water, you'll start to lose weight. Flush out the toxins. right? Get your metabolism <coughs> back to where it needs to be because it's probably a little, a little crusty and, 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 you know, needs to get some... some, some you know, some oil back in that engine, and that's yeah. what the water does. Um, that, 
two simple tasks that your that your your, your audience can start. You know, your audience tomorrow. now too. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, they they can start immediately. That there's no gym involved. There's no time involved involved for the the people that work two jobs. Right. Right. But it's just two simple tasks. Yeah. There's a, there's a small investment in the scale, and then there's just your 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 water. You know, there's a there's a lady that I like a lot. Her name is. Uh, Wendy Miller, Wendy Nelson now. And back then she says that I told her don't weigh yourself, but I can't remember how, how or when it happened, but a scale is a must. It's a must. A scale is a, a, a compass that tells you where you're going. So if, you're, if, you're, if, the, if, if, it's, if the numbers are going up and you don't want that, well, you know what to do. Like me, whenever I hit 188, I know that I have to cut down on my tortillas. I can't be eating too many. Yeah. But but if I'm 184, man, I'm gonna have an extra taco that day. Right. But as long as I can see the scale at 185, I'm good because that's my weight. Yeah. And then um, <clears throat> you know, you, then you'll get to the point where you 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 see your scale and you make adjustments to what you to get back to where you were or to or to you know if you, if you you gain two pounds over the weekend eating eating tacos and drinking wine and, and drinking beer, then you know that the next two days need to need to be adjustment. A adjustment. You know? Yeah, I like the way you put it. Now that's easy, guys. Come on now. Right. It's giving yeah. us some tips here. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's it's the scale is important. It's 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 number one. That I I think so too. If you have a scale, you know where you're at. You know where you're going. Absolutely. So if you want to have the body, that's what you do. If you want to have the mind, books. He he's co-author of those books. Three books. Uh, his name is Alex Alfaro. It's in here. He got to write a chapter in there. Yeah, each each, each book one has of them a has a chapter. Yeah. I mean, if you wanna take note of it, where can they get these books? You can anyway? get them on Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So if you wanna get a book and see what he wrote, Alex Alf Alf Alfaro. Yeah. Alfaro. 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 Alex Alfaro. If you wanna know what he wrote, hey, go get him. I just uh, I just found it so impressive that our team went and found this awesome young man. Um, he's got the body, he's got the mind, he's got the business. It is possible, and I know he says it's easy, it's easy. Yeah. I, you know me, I'm gonna go with the other <laughs> side where it may be a struggle, but if you find a reason to get it done, you're gonna get it done. If there's no reason for you to do it, even if we paid you a million dollars, you're not gonna do it. You gotta find your reason. What's your purpose? Why do you want to do it? Mm -hmm. I know that people have gone. I know this wonderful story, Alex. There's this man that he's my friend now. He has a beautiful girlfriend, a beautiful wife, and he wants to give her a good life. So he goes out to get a job, mm -hmm. and he doesn't have a documentation to be in the United States. So they tell him, no citizenship, you can't work here. And he goes to the next place, and they tell him the same thing. And they, he goes to the third, and so on and so forth. So he thinks, man, nobody's going to give me a job. So you know what he did? He created his own job. And, and he started washing cars. And you may think, well, okay, well, I guess that's good. But then he figured out how to wash cars for dealers. And so he hired one guy. And then he hired another guy. And now he's at 120 guys. Mm. And he makes over a million dollars a year. Isn't that incredible? Yep. That's intense. So, but he had, he found his reason, the love, yeah. for, the love for his wife. Nothing was going to stop him. Yeah, and he wasn't going to sit home and say, well, I don't have any documentation, therefore I'm never going to get a job. He says, if they don't give me a job, I'm going to create a job. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, absolutely. But you got to find your reason. Purpose, purpose is everything. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of, it's the number one. So in Napoleon Hill's Laws of Success, um, it, number one is definite major purpose, which is, your overall life purpose but that needs to be broken down to you have to have a purpose for everything that you decide to do right whether it's fitness whether it's your 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 relationships with your family or your friends there's got to be purpose there too that's right yeah you know, and, and um, so that's that's important because without a solid purpose you're, you're not going to take action I mean that's just that's <coughs> so I'm gonna put him on the spot okay here we go what's your purpose for keeping the body, keeping the mind so active. I don't meet a lot of people like you that want to put so much beautiful, wonderful information. Yeah. What's your purpose for keeping your business growing as it's growing? What's your purpose? What motivates you? What, get, what gets you excited every day? 
Uh, well, continuous growth is is, is number one what? purpose. For but what? It, oh. it, so, and it, it's for longevity, because I, I I plan to be on this earth as long as I could possibly be. I mean, that's that's and that's so I can uh, take that continuous growth and start to share, and start to and, and teach and start to um, show people <coughs> what's needed. To, to be able to be successful in all aspects of their life. That is so beautiful. So you just started because you're sharing with our yeah, uh, is, YouTube which subscribers, which, which are thousands of people, <laughs> thanks to you. And you know, you're yeah. sharing, and I see you say you want to be here on this earth for a long time. I've already called my time at 90, so I better hurry up and get a whole bunch of stuff done. But I want to share his shirt. He's not going to take it off yet. But I want <laughs> you to a good age. stand up so you can see it. They can see your shirt, stretch it down. And let me read it to you. Birthplace, earth, race, human. And guys, we've talked about it before. We are only one human race. The human yeah. race. Uh, politics, freedom. Religion, love. Isn't that so cool? I love your shirt. It's who really that simple. Who designed I mean, it? You know, what? it's funny because I saw it, I saw it on... Um, I don't know one of the social media <coughs> i think it's li the linkedin is the only thing i have um for my business and i saw a picture of, of a of a, a little girl wearing it and i just instantly said i gotta get me one of these shirts so i searched for it and i found it on amazon i don't you know that it's, is it's so just a t-shirt on amazon that i found. that is so cool i love that uh i asked him did you do it on purpose he goes of course <laughs> <laughs> i did it on purpose so your purpose is to share and yeah, you're sharing to today. And share. It's you know. You're sharing through your books too. The chapters that you wrote, you're sharing already. Yeah, and that's where that's where it kind of started for me. I wasn't mentally ready. I wasn't. I, I felt like I wasn't mentally ready. But you, you're always ready. I'm not gonna. At the <coughs> time, at the time, I felt that way. But looking back, it's it's just something I told myself to not do something right. Um, yeah, and it's just it, there's so much information that you just can't learn um anywhere i mean you especially in the educational system anywhere in anything yeah else. yeah there's there's just so much out there and you know and you, people don't learn how to think they're just taught what to think and i want to be somebody who teaches people how to think all right welcome I to mean, my club yeah i i mentioned that i teach a master a mastermind class now for 16 years yeah i've been sharing it I, i've taught it here and in vegas hello to everybody out there and um i know that you're part of a mastermind yes for how many years now stoic mastermind we've been around for about five years um but prior to that i just had kind of independent masterminds that i would go to uh, for continuous growth about 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. But so the one that... 15 years. 15, but 15 one, years? Yeah. The one that we do now has been around for five years. Okay, cool. And yeah. and you teach in that class also, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's obviously, it has its mastermind purpose, which is to be around uh, like-minded individuals uh, to promote you know, positive mental attitudes and to champion growth for each individual and to, and to get them to be the best that they can be. Well, that is so that's, awesome. That's the purpose of the mastermind and then at the same time teaching some of the techniques that I've learned in NLP and 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 the you know the 17 laws of success all that gets taught um, and then uh, right now I'm developing the the the, the course that we've kind of got into we talked a little bit about uh, you know about the the subconscious reprogramming that is so, so cool yeah I'm calling I'm gonna call that mind gym that's it I'm signing up <laughs> That, yeah. that is so cool mind gym yeah that the subconscious mind i know that i mentioned it in our channel but not uh as deep as the way we were talking about it before the camera went on yeah but you know um i guess um for me it was a struggle learning yeah. i wasn't the ambassador of reading i hated reading yeah. uh i don't know if you hated reading but absolutely yeah and so we get into a state of mind where we program ourselves and the way I started programming myself is that I started telling people, I like reading. I like, re I would meet somebody, hey, my name is Frank, I like reading. They look at me like, this guy's kind of, what's up with that guy? <laughs> but then I knew that I was helping my mind 
get into the state of mind. Yeah, I was programming myself. Auto suggestion. And then, Napoleon yes, auto suggestion is yeah. one of the most powerful tools. The most powerful tools. Absolutely. Yeah, and so I started, I like reading, I like reading. And then when I, st I first read my first, um, not chapter, my first paragraph, I was like, wow, I guess I can read. Mm -hmm. I, with intention, that is. Because, you know, at school, yeah, I read chapters so and so, and we read it for whatever reason. But when it, it's with intention and nobody's watching, and, and it gets done, that's with intention. That's powerful. So I read my first paragraph, and then first chapter, first book. I fell in love with it. Then I started telling people I love reading. And it got to the point that I, I self-nominated me the ambassador of reading. <laughs> and now like I promote it. reading around the world. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you understand <clears throat> that, you know, it, when we're first introduced to reading, we're, we're given books, we're, we're handed books that um, aren't really that interesting. I mean, <laughs> it's, the, yeah. I mean <laughs> it's just to be honest. It, so so we're, we're going through a subconscious programming of our, throughout our educational years that it's just books that we have to read. Nobody Nobody <laughs> likes having to do anything, right? Yeah. Every, nobody likes to have to do something. So we're given books, and reading is introduced to us in, in, in a position where subconsciously we just dislike it. Um, but it does take that very first book that you decide to read on your own um, that you enjoy that'll, get, that'll reprogram that subconscious. And for you, it was that one. For me, it was Napoleon Hill, thinking. Yeah, uh, one of my That's friends... He's probably a professional baseball player. I don't know where he's sat. His name is Ramon. And we used to work at Jack Lane. And he had a, an, an intense body like yours. I wasn't that close to him, but in the sense of the body. But one day he shows up and he says, Hey, Frank, I, I brought you a book. Read it. It's going to do great for you. It wasn't Napoleon Hill. It was uh, Psycho Cybernetics. Have oh, you ever heard of it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's nice another almost. classic. Yeah. Sure. He, he handed it to me and I, too, put it away instead of reading it. Mm -hmm. And then when I read it years later, I'm like, geez, now I know what Ramon was talking about. That goes deep into the subconscious. Yeah. Yep. And it talks about the power of the mind. Yep. And it talks about how powerful the mind is where you could live. There's a story, and I know I mentioned it in one of uh, my videos, of how, well, there are many stories. I was going to get into the book, but I've done it before, so I'm not going to get into it. But it does talk about the power of the mind yeah. and how powerful the subconscious is. Yeah, if, if people would, would simply <clears throat> understand that thoughts are things yeah. that they can create with their thoughts, um, if that was taught in any kind of system, any kind of educational system. Well, it is in our we, masterminds. In our masterminds, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, <clears throat> we live in a different world for sure. Yeah. Now, I'll, I'll, I do want to share a story. It's clearly in my mind, and I, I know it's in Psycho-Cybernetics. There's this lady that's in love with this one man, and he had a big lip, and she tells him, you know what? I think you would look so handsome, and I would marry you if you were to get rid of that, mm -hmm. that big lip. So he grabs his money, <clears throat> and there was really nothing wrong with the lip, according to the doctor. <clears throat> and uh, he fixes it. So he says, I'm gonna fix it. There's really nothing wrong with you. I'm just a little bit enlarged, but I'm gonna fix it, but I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go back and tell that young lady that you spent all your money fixing the lip. And so he does, and, and the lady gets so upset. Oh, you're such an idiot, you're a fool. Why did you spend all your money? I don't wanna be with you anymore. And I'm gonna curse you with whatever curse. And his lip, he felt a little bump in his lip. And he goes, oh my God, the curse is happening to me. Mm -hmm. But that's where the power of the mind comes in. Yep. So she curses him. He accepts it. The lip is now growing with a bug. She tells him that she was going to get a bug. He goes back to the doctor. The guy looked uh, like 20 years older, I think. He couldn't sleep. So everything was happening to him. And the doctor says, here, let me check out the lip says there's no curse there's no bug it's just a little extra piece of tissue that's growing i'm gonna get rid of it for you yeah and you're done with it <clears throat> don't go back to that lady she's a she's a mean lady she plays with a with your mind mm -hmm. he ends up falling in love with a the nurse they get married no curse but it was the, the the doctor puts the story in there to prove that the mind is so powerful yep he could have killed himself just thinking that the bug was in there. Yep. Do you remember that story? In yeah, the book? yeah. Yeah? 
Well, yeah. did I say it more or less? That's, yeah, yeah, it was pretty close. Kind of I mean, close it, up. It, 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 it gets to the point, which is the, the fact that thoughts are things. I mean, if you think you're sick, guess what? You're going to get you're sick. You're going to be sick. Yeah, I mean, and which was, which was the, the, the wild thing about the last two years is that it's, it, it's it, a lot of people meant were, it, it was a virus of the mind on top, of, on top of a virus of, of, you know, a physical virus. But, you know, positive mental, maintaining the positive mental attitude and, and um, you know, doing the little things that you could do to, to stay healthy, it's all, that's all you need. What's one good thing to stay positive during the day? I, I have mine. I'm just asking for yours. As far one as... One thing, one little thing that you can do just to stay positive. Just read, read a chap, read one page of a book. That's it. Read because you, you want to see. You want to hear an easy one. When you get out into the street, look for any child, any child, and just smile at the kid. That's and the beautiful. kid is gonna smile right back, and you're gonna go, "What? That yeah. was exciting! Look at that!" And yeah. the kids don't care. I was uh, <clears throat> I was driving down my street one day, and I'm just waiting for the red light, and all of a sudden I hear a lot of screaming, and it's not bad scream, but it's like, "Hey." Hey, and I'm just minding my own business. And I finally look over to the, my left. And there was a little girl that wanted my attention just to say hello. And so I look over and I go, hey, how are you? And the mother looked over like, like apologizing. And I'm like, hey, it's cool. Hey, hey <laughs> have a great day. She made my day. Yeah. And the little girl didn't care who I was. She wanted to say hello. So I said, hey, that's a pretty good one. So whenever I see a street, I get out on the street, I go, and I smile. And usually... Usually, like 95% of the time, the kid is going to smile back. Right. They have no prejudice. They just want to smile. Yep. Yeah, right now, when I told you about the little smile, I noticed how you got a little smirk on there. <laughs> just imagining. Yeah, yeah, really. <clears throat> easy task, huh? It, very easy. I mean, it, it, <clears throat> just saying hello to people. On, yeah. on the, I mean, it, it's just greeting people. It's makes you feel good regardless of whether they say hi back or not most, <laughs> most times you most times people are dumbfounded by the fact that you said hello they're but, like me yeah yeah but i mean one page is growth even if you if you read one page you're already better than you were the day before and you know one one thing um i want to mention you i i love the way you invest in yourself you invest in your mind you invest in your body you invest in your company that's awesome, uh, and it's a guarantee you're going to have success that way. Uh, a lot of people say they don't have time to invest in going to the gym, but have you noticed their fingers don't stop yeah. throughout the day? Yeah, right. They don't have any time, and then they get some st stupid <laughs> thing on the that catches 10 million views yeah. because uh, a mouse didn't get eaten by a cat, and it's got <laughs> 50 million views, and they're like, look, you didn't eat them, and they spend... 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, but they don't have time to read a page. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah, that's, and then they wonder why life is the way it is. Right. But here you invest in your business and your relationship with your wife and, and your body and your mind. And then they, they, I get a lot of people that say, oh, I want to live his life. Well, if you want to live his life, do what he does. Right. I mean, and that not just, I mean, and that's the whole purpose of, <clears throat> of modeling, you know, in NLP, it's a process called modeling. You model the people that you want to be like. It's really, you don't, you don't need to, like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's, there's simple tasks that you can do on a daily basis and reading somebody's autobiography that's successful that you really, that you would follow. And I mean, there's, do what they did. Yeah. You know, and they have a lot of, there's a lot of great books out there that that can keep your mind where it needs to be and you know without a healthy mind you, you know you're not going to get to a healthy body so I, and then we talked about earlier about what comes first the <laughs> healthy mind or the healthy body but um i think this is just the combination you know you got you have to have the mind to tell you that i want to have a healthy body so i would say it's it's the mind first um yeah uh, Positive mental attitude. I mean, that's one of the books there, and uh, it's another Napoleon Hill principle. Um, it's yeah, it's it's everything, especially in this in this crazy, divisive situation <laughs> that we're in right now. 
<clears throat> yeah, and uh, there are so many distractions. Even though today, nowadays, I was uh, talking to my son, Nicholas, how in the days when I graduated from the university, if we needed to write a term paper, we would go to the library and then go to the row and get the number and get the section and get... It was so hard. And nowadays, they don't even have to go to the library. They yeah. get all the research through here. There is so much information. Which is the blessing and can be the curse as well. I think it's more of a curse for <clears throat> yeah. most people. Yeah. Only because there's so much. And when there's so much information, I think it just gets too loud, too noisy. Overlooked. And yeah. people need to focus, need to have the need to have the determination of this is what I want to listen to. Yeah. There's a video that I'm going to be uh, doing, I'm going to be talking to the crew about is, um, uh, it's called Your Glasses. Uh, uh, your Glasses, let me see. He could always said it. Um, your Glasses. I forgot, I, for I wrote it down, but it's Your Glasses. Your Glasses Determine Your Success or Your Glasses uh, dictate your glasses dictate the life that you're gonna live. Yeah, something like that. Because see, people the lens that you're looking the at lens, the lens, yeah, yeah, and the lenses are uh, just like today. Nowadays, we have information from here to the moon and back. So it, th there's that much information, and unless you're focused, unless you know what you want, unless you know where you're going, there are so many distractions. Yeah, you're gonna get lost. Yeah. You have to have a purpose, like you said. Yeah. What is it that I want to create? What is it that I want to do? I really I really liked um, having you here, man. You gave a lot of powerful Thank advice. You. Uh, get a scale. If yeah, anything, get a scale. <laughs> yeah. And it nothing wrong if you want to be 210 pounds. Well, be 210, but know that you're 210 intentionally. Absolutely. Because you want to be 210. There's guy, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. if you want to be 185 like me or 185 like him, 80 like him then then cool then be it i'm just a little bit taller than him so i could be five, <laughs> five, five pounds heavier so yeah um well, last, thank you i, well, I appreciate any, it yeah did you have fun uh, absolutely i want to yeah. do it again so all right we're yeah. gonna do it again there's a lot of a lot of good <clears throat> stuff out there that we can talk about so yeah you know what next time let's set it up where we go have a cup of coffee and yeah. we take some notes down and then we get to share with the audience yeah absolutely. and you know what i fun. think we're gonna have a lot of views on this one you know why? Show me your muscle. Go for it. <laughs> just, just that one right there. Look, look, you guys. Isn't that intense? Now, it's so cool that he, he can show you the, his muscle and you can see it. And wow, this guy does go to the gym. We're not going to ask him to take off his shirt. But <laughs> sorry. And, but, you know, if we can see the mind, if we can see his mind, his muscles in the mind are probably as, as strong as his muscles down here. Yeah. So, if you want to have a... Say, I always say, ripped mind, ripped body. Yeah, well... <laughs> I don't know about that one, you Alex. You can get it. You that, can get no, it. You're already, you're no, already no, selling but, yourself short. No, no, no. Not for me. Not for me. I'm talking about there's, uh, there's guys that can go to the gym, but they will not pick up a book. So, ripped mind, ripped body, I don't know. I mean, there's a, guy, a lot of guys that focus only on the body. I guess and I there's a lot those of guys. Are, those are my goals. Yeah, and there's a lot of guys that only focus on the mind, and you can see them. Yeah. Well, but when we have a beautiful combination like you, powerful mind, powerful body, uh, it creates a powerful business, powerful relationship. Man, we need more people like you. Thank that, you. But that don't say it's it. too easy, because then it makes me feel kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Mr. Alex Alfaro, Alfaro, right? Alfaro, Alfaro. Okay, Mr. Alex Alfaro. So we're coming to the conclusion. I had a treat. I know that we could keep it going. Off Absolutely. cameras, we'll keep it going right now. Right. <laughs> but uh, I do want to mention your books, Refusing to Quit, which was the first one you wrote on, yeah. right? Yeah, Refusing to Did Quit. Did you have a good time on that one? Yeah, it was fun. It, it, it was uh, obviously my first, my uh, first chapter and, and you know, trying to process it. Uh, it, was, it was fun. An exciting I had a good time, time with all the yeah. people that were involved in this book. Did you guys get together and meet before it was? No, no. Everybody, everybody in the room. Everybody, we we knew each other from the the classes, the classes, the, the foundation, um, and we kind of just presented our, our chapters, and, and that was it. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. And then positive mental attitude. Yeah, it's that another, looks so cool. It's another um, another one that we did, but the, we were specific to positive mental attitude. See, on there's only one. one complaint about this one. I think they should have put your picture right there. <laughs> <laughs> With no shirt. 
<laughs> and then Journeys to Success. Yeah, and then Journey to Success was the, uh, the most recent. It's been a few years since that. I, if I would have collaborated with this one, uh, I would have made sure you and I would have been on the picture. Right. Yeah, so right. Uh, Journeys to Success, if you want to get it through Amazon. Positive Mental Attitude and Refusing to Quit. And we had them here in our channel. If you know anybody that has written a book, anybody that takes care of their mind and their body, anybody that wants to share and contribute, let us know. We'll have them over. We'll invite them or we'll invite her. And hey, let this continue to grow. It'll be a great channel. Thanks to you. Thank you for watching. Thank Anything you. else? That's it? That's it. Okay. Till next time, your friend, the ambassador of reading, Frank Kinigas, wishing you well today and always, knowing that you will find and get what you are looking for. Thank you for watching our channel and congratulations for making it here where we give information that benefits the individual that's watching and their loved ones. I invite you to subscribe and be part of our channel. Set the notifications and watch the new videos. Thank you and welcome.